What's going on? It's Alexander here, back with some more Vampire. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon, I'll drink at night. Hmm. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly, so joyful. <laughs> Not so no at reason all. at all to rejoice then. Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts, fire, broken window of the shoe shop, the torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Is there right. anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? Oh. Why are you so cynical? Cynicism is the polite way to express despair, Doctor. No Maybe reason at all. Let me tell you. Oh, what can't it right, you like this? Um, it's okay. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change. And to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist, and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt, and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean? No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. All right. Goodbye. We already know where Sean Hampton is. We still haven't talked to... Uh, What's-his-face with the mustache. It's kind of like Charlie Chaplin. Well, there's someone. Who are you? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburn, if you must know. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with. But it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. That too, but... 
That's what not can right. you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Are you thinking about someone in particular? No. Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Is there no one who deserves your leniency, then? Well, Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Alright, so... We're getting a list of stuff to do here. Hello, boy. Um, uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Have you ever thought about leaving? Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the dock, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? It's hard to work. What with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. They both feel they should run the dogs. And neither of them probably deserve to. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough. No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. No. This city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburn. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. Ah. So long, right. Rufus. Be careful. Take care. I should be at there, Stella Fishman. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? All right. In the back of that head, sir. Gentlemen it's locked, all right. It's house. locked. 
So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. Okay, she's healthy. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know, but it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food. Did your husband die in the war? Oh no, my Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. Yeah, probably explains it's not How do you pay the rent then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Those people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. Goodbye, Miss Fishbone. Take care of yourself. Anything else that we can find on any of them? Wait. Looking for like notes. All right, then. Please don't stay. Where else? We're on here. I'm trying to make sure we talk to everyone before going. Who have we not talked to? How many are missing? A lot. Let's see. We haven't talked to Charlie Chaplin wannabe, and whoever these six people are. What's down here? Nothing. Fish burn, Ichabod. Luna. Wait, there's one of the ones we're missing. See what's up with him. He's probably gonna be a douche, but whatever. Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Doctor Jonathan Reed. That's who I am. And who are you? Ah, oh, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck, you must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. <laughs> but, nah. 
You've been a soldier. I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because nah. of me. We, we've done pretty good at him, bro. Tell me about this part of town. Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weena says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Tell me about the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. No, if you're wrong. Uh. Are you so heartless that you could pull the trigger and kill someone without even blinking? Have you looked around recently? Do you really think one more body will make a difference? Okay, let's all with him. Didn't we come through here? So I don't want to get started or anything, because this is the last of this recording session. Good evening. Hello again. Booth Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. I'm not that easily shot. Hmm. Behind all your crude words and your attitude, I sense romance and a soft heart, Miss Cox. Romance? I have no time for such rubbish. I use Booth like I use everyone else. Well, we screwed that one up. Goodbye, Miss. See, I was thinking about doing the use one there, but eh, whatever. Not like we're going to be feeding. I think someone's right over inside that wall. Alright, so... Yeah, this is supposed to be our hideout. Let's see what we have in the hideout. Is it actually secure for once? I think it's actually secure for once. Yeah, huh. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, where we probably are going to do the side quest we got. In what order, I'm not entirely sure yet. Well, I've... The two one... Well, there's that one. There's these, the, these three. Don't really care about that one. Don't really care about that one either, to be honest. It's more of these three that I want to make sure we check off the list. We are going to do. We are going to check out these two. See if we can screw uh, screw around. Uh, Edwin Cox and the Wet Boot Boys and any other gangs we come across. And this one. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one.